thing I'll do is um, uh, this is like a character type drawing since the body is so small and the, the face is so so much larger um, so the first thing I'll do is paint it in and I'll use a um, special uh, choice of um, color here and see if I can get the color just about where I want it so I'll say right about there. Then I'll just click on the inside of the character. Before I do that, edit, undo. Plus the opacity is not where it's supposed to be. So that'll have like a transparent look to it if you do it like that. I forgot to uh, duplicate the layer just in case I need it. And under here I have all the background layers that I created. Um, save some time with this video. Alright, so now that I have the color set at the right full 100% opacity, I'll just paint it in and everything is a solid piece for those parts so they fill in really quick. And next thing I'll do is the collar. I think the collar, maybe I can make it, um, maybe, uh, like a nice, maybe a blue collar, something like that, and then just paint those pieces, and then, um, maybe have the, the metal be like a nice light gray. And then for the eyes, um, those are, oh, uh, you know what, I forgot to um, paint that part right there. Then for the eyes, um, let's see, I'll go with a uh, dark brown, maybe like that. And then I'll just click on there real, really carefully and click in there. Yeah, I think that works. And then for the for the mouth, uh, maybe something like that. And then the nose. Actually, let me get the the teeth first. Um, so maybe something like that for that tooth. And then the nose. I'd say that's good right there. Just like the eyes. 
So that's everything. Now I have to isolate the picture and then go select invert and isolate is to select by color and it just grabs around the whole thing. You don't have to adjust it too much. I have threshold 11 for that tool. And most times it works great. It's really quick step to uh, avoiding any kind of hassle. So I'll just duplicate that to fill in any little gaps that might be there. Like if I look at this here without the, the layer added, you can see like little, if you zoom in to 200 percent, you can see like all these little white spots around the frame. So by duplicating it, it fills in those spots to some degree. And then you just merge it down. Looks like I duplicated it three times. down again. I also have to um, paint in the white highlight. I forgot to do that. So let me go to my paint tool and just click on those two really quick. Otherwise they'll be transparent and it'll look weird. Alright, next thing I want to do is just clean up some of these lines for the eyes really quick. I think they're not adjusting because they're highlighted. So go select none. Now they'll adjust. Otherwise you'll have these clear gaps at those points. You know, just look a little weird. Alright, so now I could go back to this select by color tool then select invert and now I could just get going on this um, drawing. So the first thing I'll do is um, start with the the uh, darker tones, the shadows, and I'll go to maybe 25, 26 percent and the brush about that size. Um, I do want to have like a faded brush, so I'll go with this one right here. And then I'll just start clicking on the spots that I want in shadow right away, for sure, regardless of the, the light source. So next thing I'll do is light source will be coming from the left side since his face is facing left that I'll give the most light to his face. If I had the light source on the right side this would be in shadow. I mean it, it could work and it, it would make sense but today I just want to switch it up a little. Alright so light source on the left side that means this will be in shadow here because it's um, not getting the light. And then also and then also his head is um, casting a shadow here uh, because it's so scale to such a large degree. And let's create those paw shadows. And now I'll just go with a, well actually, uh, before I do this, let me um, scale it up and 
reduce the opacity a little bit. Just go with a big brush right there. And then just get a, a nice fade to everything right there. There we go. Alright, and it's getting there. So the ear would be in shadow, but there often is like a little bit of light in there. Since it's almost like the thinner part of the face. Alright, so now I want to get some of these smaller shadows so they're not just all by themselves without any shadows at all to make it look like I address that they have some dimension to them and they're not just flat on the face. They project out these little shadows here of the fur. And I used a just a dark black pen to uh, color everything in, but I could adjust that really quick with the dilate tool, which would create a um, uh, smaller size to that that darkness of the, the thickness of the pen there. And then I have to remember right around his nose there's some darkness of the fur right around there. So I can just go like that really quick. Um, but that's about it. And next thing I'll do is the uh, highlights once I get all this squared away. And then, I guess that's okay. And his, his eye has the iris around there that's like brown. Yeah, that's good. All right, so next thing I'll do is go with the, the white color. Now I could just paint in white or I could use the, uh, the dodge tool. Which is really great. But for now I'll just go with the white paint and just highlight this pretty quick. Uh, let's see. Maybe go right here and up. Uh, maybe I will use the highlight tool. The only problem with the highlight tool is, well, not really a problem, but a, a challenge is that this highlight dodge tool is either really strong or really weak. There's, yeah, well, I guess that's good. It's working okay now. Sometimes it doesn't, yeah, like it. Sometimes it's too strong with the uh, the line that it creates. Like even that is too much all at once. So I have to adjust it just like you would the brush. But when you go back on it, you got to be a little careful not to overdo it. Yeah, that's better. Alright, so now that I have that, you can see the pictures getting there. I'd say it's about 50% done. And then I could always add textures later to it where you just take a big. Um, 
block of texture and just place it over the whole character you could paint textures on there I, I think I might try that rather than just put a because I don't have any fur textures right at the, the moment only because this dog is like really fuzzy and furry Alright, so now that this is getting there, let's see, I have to, get some highlight on the tongue, reflective light, because the tongue is supposed to be moist. Um, so he can digest his food. So if I go 100% opacity, let's see how strong that paint can be. Not quite as strong as the brush at 100%. Yeah, see how strong the brush is? Instant. But the brush is a little too big there for what I'm going for. So that's good right there. And then the tooth I could highlight a little bit too since the tooth is a little wet. And then the nose, of course, would have a little moisture to it. But I want to be careful where I put those speckled dots there so they're not, not affecting the darkness of the nose. So you, I use them very sparingly. Then I don't want to highlight the back too much because I want that in shadow. Uh, but I say that's good right there. And then I'll just highlight this piece here. Now I'm using a, a stronger opacity so it fills in quicker. But you do have to like brush it as you go because it's not quite as strong as the white line. The great thing is it will fill in the um, fill within the lines while the brush will just go right over the, the black the uh, paintbrush. In other words, I don't want gray lines for the, the black lines. But I will reduce those lines in just a few moments with a special tool called the Dilate tool, which is really cool. Just you, I learned all about this through testing all the different tools and options and stuff like that. Alright, so here's the, uh, the iris of the eye. That's good. Alright, and next thing I'll do, he's got these little spots for his whiskers. And I could put whiskers on this dog. I mean, every dog, well, most dogs out whiskers. And then I'll just highlight this really light for the collar. I don't want to get under here because that is supposed to be in shadow. Alright, and then his paws, really quick, just simple highlights. And then inner part of the ear. And then I'd like to do some really bright highlights. So I'll say something like that. Like a reflective light. I 
have to um, increase the size of the brush a little. It's a little too small. <coughs> now it's a little too large. So this is probably about 80% finished now. I always like to um, cover every open spot for the fur with just a little bit of shading. So nothing is just one flat color. Not every spot, but most spots. Then I have to think, well, what do I want to project forward versus further back? And where the light hits is often what's projecting forward. Alright, so now that I have all this, See that's pretty good. See this doesn't make a difference. I have to go to burn to um, get the darker tones in here. Burn will actually um, increase the saturation of your colors too, while also darkening them. So it's a pretty powerful tool if you overuse it. Alright, so this part would be slightly in shadow, and then this part as well. Well, I guess the light source is from directly above then. Alright, so next thing I'll do... Is just... Go back in and finish a couple more spots. That I think could use highlights and stuff. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's what I was going for. And then I'll just increase the contrast. But before I do that, I'll go to that Edge Detect No, it's the generic dilate tool. And you'll see it adjust here. Yeah, that looks really cool. That tool is so cool. It like softens the look of your lines so they're not so overpowering and it looks like the uh, highlights didn't paint in so I have to go back and get those again it's weird I don't know why that didn't work but then I do want to add some lighting to the uh, eye there so I'll just zoom in a little closer Highlight this a little bit 
before I do that, of course, save it. I should have pressed save quite a few times there, but... Alright, so next thing I have to do... City, a really light brush and just highlight that a little bit so there's some some light in there and then um, going with the, the line and then just draw some lines in there varied up so not everything is just a flat color and the only other thing I was thinking of is to add some texture to this so then I could add some darkness to that part right there So let me go to my brush and get maybe this tool here and let's see what happens here if I increase the scale of it. I'll just duplicate this character this way if I mess it up and I have a backup. Uh, but let's see, I'll go a little bit stronger opacity and now I'll just blotch this on there I think this will work let's I'll find out just to give it like a oh no you know I forgot as you can see it's Merging out of the lines there. Right there, too. I'll clean that up right now. I forgot to um, select it. So I could zoom back a little. I don't have to be so close to it. And I think a little white behind the eye would be okay, actually. Um, and then a little more color to that brown. Maybe like that. Just a, just a little bit. So that brush is right under this brush. bit of white. Right on right behind the eye, just so it's not just the iris, but there's some eye to it as well. Some eyeball. And then for that I'll go with the black and finish off the iris this is not just a blurry edge but has a definite edge to it but that's too much there we go that's good so now I'll just go back to that brush 
that looks pretty neat and that's too dark so right about there oh you know what I forgot to, to highlight it again I have to before I use a brush like this which is so so erratic let's see I'll just highlight this character now I'll do select invert now I could paint it without worrying about oh well am I going to go out, out of the lines here so there we go I could go right over that and it's not like paint, painting all over the place And one thing to keep in mind is I don't want to diminish the highlights too much. So I don't want to go over those too much. But I do want to make sure it looks like it's a more gritty look to the, the face. So a little more texture there. Alright, I think that's pretty good. The only thing I'm missing here is contrast. So let me go with my colors see what I can do there and now that I like this I don't need this other layer underneath I can just delete it and next thing I'll do is the uh, contrast alright so I'm done with that tool I'll just back to a regular brush so getting back to my contrast there it is yeah contrast is really awesome it creates like so much of a stronger image if you're looking for a more in other words an image that stands out more so the only last thing I want to do here would like to be um, I'd like to just highlight this a little right behind the, the eye not highlight it but darken it alright that's good just a little bit and looking at that I think that's pretty good that's what I was going for I could try another dilate let's see what happens too much now. Yeah, I like this a little bit better. Alright, so now I'll bring the vehicle back in. And now I'll pull all my layers in. with uh, this select none and start to put this uh, whole painting together illustration I would call it and the first thing I'll do is the road since that's the, the ground and that would be this piece here So I'll just bring this right down here, and then I'm going to scale it. First thing I'll do is this, since the road would be 
right about there. Scale that. And yeah, I think that's fine. What I'd like to do is just add some dimension to it. So I'll just pull this out a little and then pull that out over there. So it's not just flat looking, it has some dimension. It's subtle, but it gives it a better idea. Alright, next thing I'll do is use my eraser and just cover this part right here so the road looks like it's going back maybe um, a little more like that well that's too much on the back now I'll leave it at that alright next thing I have to do is bring the uh, sky into this the sky will start up here and then I'll just pull it down underneath the road of course the the grass and the hills will be back there and these are all layers that I created separately I actually made these back in 2014 2016 and now I'm just reusing them now to save time alright so next thing I'll do is pull this uh, piece here under here and just pull it down I'd say right about there This will all start to make sense in, in just a few few moments. All right, so there's that. Next thing I'll do, I'll throw these in there. This way it's not just a flat looking background, but I could have that right there and that solves the problem really quick of, of that flat edge. And I don't want the edges to pull your eye too far down so I'll just pull this out so it's more of a flat look to it for the the edge and next thing I'll do is um, add this piece here this will be like the hills actually there are Well, you could have a little hill. And then I'll just rotate it like that. color to it all right that hill probably is unnecessary so I'll just leave it out for now I do want some trees in there, so let me get that going. There we go, there's one 
tray and I don't want it to be higher than his ear so I'll just reduce the uh, position of it and this one I'll make a little bit lighter Duplicate that and pull another one back here, but then I'll reduce the scale of it since it's receding further into the background. So maybe like that. And then maybe make a another one over here maybe like that yeah that's cool because then it looks like it's moving backwards alright so I have to merge that down there and then I do want to make it a little a little bit of uh, less opacity so it'll like fade into the blue sky and next thing I have to do is just add some shading to all this and I'll throw in some clouds up there A cloud. I'll make a cloud up there. Maybe uh, duplicate it and have another one over here. And then merge them down. Reduce the uh, opacity if I want, but let me just brighten it up because it's um, a little too too much of a rain cloud. There we go. So maybe like that, and then the color of the blue sky. I could adjust here. But you gotta be so careful with that. You're better off just going colorize. Just a little more of a sea blue or something like that. Not sea blue, but. Alright, um, next thing I have to do is the sh shadows, are the shadows. Before I do that, let me um, see what else I can do here. I don't need this. The dust from the car I think would be cool. save this really quick so I don't lose it alright next thing I'll do is increase the scale of this piece here so it's like that and then just rotate it and I drew this I drew everything in here but at separate times and that's just to save time so that looks cool like that maybe a little further back like that yeah that's cool give a sense that the car is like really moving out and 
pulling up all the dirt and dust. So next thing I have to do is the shadow layer. And that would be we I have to get a sunbeam in there. That would always look cool. So the sun is actually from this side. I can just increase the scale of that. Maybe something like that. And then let's make sure it's fully bright so there's no darkness to it. Then I have to add the layer for the shadows. And this will give it more of dimension versus a flat look. So I have to decide where I want these shadows. And I think I'll start right here, but that's the wrong, wrong brush. I need to soften the edges of it. So something like that would be good. that a little. And then for this, this is really critical here, so it's not so flat looking. I'll really darken this part here. And then I do want darkness underneath the car, but I have to plan this out a little bit. So let me just get that there. Like that. There, that's good. And you can see it makes the car feel more, gr more grounded. Now the only thing I don't like is the uh, backgrounds fighting with the, the dog. So there's a quick way to resolve that. And that dust cloud's a little too powerful. Let me lighten that up a little bit. Like that would be good. I could actually duplicate it and then pull that further back. That. And then reduce the scale of it if I want. But normally a dust cloud gets bigger the further back it goes until it fades into thin air. So maybe something like that. I could also put that behind the car like that. I think that'd be better. And then move that over here. Like that. Yeah, that's cool. Alright. And next thing I'll do is... Uh, image uh, duplicate. Now what this will do is I'll close off the uh, characters and there's the background. So what I'll do is oh, I have to get rid of this too. I'll just flatten image like that. Now I could go contrast Now I could go brightness. Maybe something like that. Now I could go select all, edit, copy, go into here, edit, paste. And it layers it perfectly right where it should be.
so I'll put it right there. And now I could change the color of it if I want with the color balance. That'll adjust the color this way. I don't know if it's necessary, but I think that's cool, I like that. And then the hue saturation, I could always increase the saturation, make it more colorful. Maybe like that. I think that's cool. color of the tongue is a little too red right now. So let me um, adjust that slightly if, if possible. And I'll use the dodge tool to do that. There we go. This way it's not so red the car is red. Alright, so there's the uh, picture. I'll just do a quick blur to soften some of the rough edges. Um, for this drawing, I guess I'll put some whiskers in there. Do a duplicate of it. And then whiskers could really mess up your drawing if you don't set them up right. Like they could look really weird and out of place. I don't get them right. Yeah, it's such a critical thing, whiskers. It doesn't seem like it, but you can really mess things up if you don't put them in the right spot. Since there are these really bold lines just cutting across your drawing. But I like to soften the, the tips of the whiskers. But yeah, if you look really close, it's amazing how many whiskers a uh, cat or dog or rabbit has. Alright, so this piece here can't really do too much without messing up the rest of it there. That's good. I mean, there's not too much more I could do with that. As far as the uh, the color, I think that seems okay. The color of the ground is the only thing that. I'll adjust here. So let me um, change the coloration of the ground back to where it, it was originally, more like a gray color versus a faded color. And I can just go really quick the erase tool and just 
get all this above here. Next thing I'll do is the uh, name, and I'll go new layer, transparent, and next thing I'll do is just draw my name, write my name, and I'll zoom in, go up here where it's clear. to remember get it fully to the opacity and then maybe five there's a little delay so I don't have the style that I normally do but it works so it's uh, April 2021 20 years goes so fast so do, so does 5 years so do 5 years alright so there's that yeah it, like the older you get the faster time seems to go because the first first years all through high school and grade school and kindergarten and all that those years seem to go on forever you're like oh man when, when am I getting out of school have summer do whatever I want I don't have to listen to all these people in other words you know, you gotta do homework and stuff outside of school just to complete your your class. I think they should eliminate homework. <laughs> I really do. Just have it self-contained within the class. Just like a job, you shouldn't have to take your your job home after you leave the job. There should be projects you have to keep working on just to keep the job going but that's how school is so like even teachers they have to go home and work on their grades and test papers and stuff like that I mean I guess it's possible it could be done within the class but then they wouldn't be teaching anything while they're doing the grades so they could always hand out assignments to work on while they're doing the grades but I'm not a teacher so I'm not going to say how how all that should be alright so there it is uh, the, the signature has to um, be reduced brought down to a smaller scale so I'll just go like that and now I'll just scale it down like that and then I'll bring it down to the corner right about there then I'll cut the opacity in half well, maybe 75%, 70%, well, actually, a little bit less there, so it doesn't stand out too much, but just so you can see the letters, that was the wrong layer, there, you can see the four, alright, 
so there it is. That's the uh, drawing. And thanks for watching. Let uh, me create this uh, shading for the dog and the background setup. Uh, but thanks a lot for watching. And feel free to comment, share, like, subscribe. Try to centralize or decentralize.